Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is a morning update. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Before we jump into the article, I just want to give you a quick update on the Core 4 series. Uh, there's three episodes already available, and the fourth episode will be out on Friday. And the fourth episode has to do with Adriana Ross. So expect that on Friday, and that will be part four of our five-part series. And part five on Nadia Marcinkova will be out the next Friday. So that will conclude the five-part series. That'll wrap up the core four series, and then that'll be able that'll that'll be there for you to be able to go back and check out if you haven't listened to the core four series yet, or you want to listen to it again when it's in its entirety. That'll be available for you. Uh, ready to go in about two weeks with episode four coming out this Friday. So Friday and then the Friday after will be the conclusion. I had some people ask me when uh, that was going to be wrapped up, so I wanted to touch on that before we jumped into our article for the day today. Our article today is from courthousenews.com, and the headline is, Pandemic Won't Slow Fight Over Sealed Jeffrey Epstein Documents. Well, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. You know, I know that we're in the middle of uh, the pandemic and, you know, it's definitely a tough time for a lot of people, but we have to keep some semblance of uh, the rule of law going, right? We have to make sure that the courts don't get backed up and we have to make sure that they're processing as many cases as they possibly can. So it's good to know that uh, that the pandemic isn't going to slow the fight over the sealed documents in the Epstein case, because it's crucial that those documents are published for the public to see. It's very crucial that that ends up happening, because there's already the air of secrecy around this whole entire thing. The whole entire shroud has been thrown over this case from the beginning. And if they keep on doing it and they, they keep on keeping things in the shadows and away from the public, they're all they're going to do is foster more resentment and foster more mistrust in them being the Justice Department. Because this is not this is not the case, the kind of case where you can hold stuff back and say it's, you know, national security. There's no national security implications here, unless, of course, the CIA gets outed as being involved. Then I guess that could be sort of a problem. But at the end of the day, that's not for the courts to decide. The courts need to just go after whatever they uh, whatever's on their plate. Right. And they can't worry about all that other crap. So it's good to see that the courts are still processing this case right now throughout this pandemic. And it's going to be interesting to see how this all ends up. This article was written by Adam Klasfeld. The federal judge who holds the key to secret records concerning the late pedophile Jeffrey Epstein refused Tuesday afternoon to approve a month-long delay in the case. Well, what would a month-long delay do anyway? I mean, in about a month, another couple of weeks, three weeks, the, the pandemic will be peaking. But even after it peaks, well, supposedly going to peak, after it peaks, there's still going to be ripple effects being felt throughout Not only the nation, but, you know, the court system, etc., etc. So I don't know what a month-long delay would have even accomplished. Seems to me like it's more dragging of the feet by the defense. Seems to me like it's more, let's try and pause this as long as possible, and we'll try and, you know, avoid the inevitable for as long as we can. Attorneys for people named in the secret batch of files sought the reprieve to extend how long they have to raise objections about public scrutiny after first receiving notice about their involvement. So because of the pandemic, they'll use that as an excuse and they'll try and, you know, use that as a way to navigate through this minefield. And we see it all the time. And from these kind of people, from uh, people like Epstein, the way that they jump through loopholes, the way that they avoid certain things within the justice system because they have high profile lawyers who know the tricks of the trade. And we see it on a regular basis, them trying to drag their feet and trying to draw out, uh, make it a drawn out process. At this point, 14 days is certainly adequate, U.S. District Judge Loretta Preska told an attorney for one of those anonymous men during a phone conference, referring to the length of time needed to respond to a notification. I mean, you need more than 14 days to respond? 14 days should be plenty of time for you to get with your high-profile lawyers and figure out a way to lie. Why do you need more than 14 days, Mr. Anonymous Man? 
And boy, we could go all day thinking about who the anonymous man is, right? There's got to be several of them. Definitely several of them. Maybe we'll talk about that at some point. Maybe we'll do like a speculative episode where we discuss who the anonymous men could be who are trying so hard to drag their feet here and trying so hard to delay the case. Like many U.S. court proceedings during the coronavirus crisis, today's hearing took place in the form of a telephone conference. As proceedings began, the former chief judge for the Southern District of New York quipped that many have been boosting their vitamin C reserves with quarantinus. I don't even know what that means, and why is she quipping anyway? Stick to the, stick to the case, Judge Prescott. You're not there to be a comedian. Nobody finds you funny. Do the right thing and unseal these documents. And save your, uh, your comedic act for the night, the night crew. The Second Circuit put Prescott at the case's helm last July, long before the novel virus COVID-19 first erupted in China, spawning a global pandemic and national emergency. Her task is to review and potentially unseal files from a lawsuit that Epstein accuser Virginia Roberts brought against the now-deceased pedophile's ex-associate Ghislaine Maxwell. Ex-associate's better than madam, I guess, or better than socialite, but I'll take it a step further. His co-conspirator. That's what Ghislaine Maxwell is, folks. She's a co-conspirator. She was just as involved in Jeffrey Epstein. She was just as involved. She might not have been uh, abusing all of the girls, but she was involved in some of the abuse. She was certainly involved in the planning. She was certainly involved in the logistics. She was certainly involved in the grooming. So co-conspirator is the the proper title to slap on Ghislaine Maxwell, in my opinion. Well, that and also when she gets her prisoner number, when she uh, eventually gets arrested, that'll be great. We could just identify her by that number then. You want to talk about the biggest slap in the face? If Maxwell ever gets arrested and she ever goes to jail for this, we will refer to her by her prison identification on this podcast, not by her name. Disclosure could prove limited. In January, Preska ruled that only records that form the basis of court rulings in Roberts' old lawsuit against Maxwell would be entitled to to the presumption of public access. She emphasized, however, that her ruling would not end the case. See, this is what's going on with Preska here. She's trying to... She's trying to toe the line on on both sides. She should just release all of of these uh, documents, be done with it, and move on with her life. But instead, she says, well, you know, they're not all entitled to the presumption of public access. But this ruling, this doesn't end the case. So what she does is she leaves the door open. For what reason? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer or a judge or anything like that. So I don't know the motivation behind something like this. But I think it's a bunch of BS if you want my opinion on it. I think that Judge Preska should just come out swinging and release these documents. Because there's no reason not to release them. All right, who are you protecting and why? Why are the rich and the powerful always protected by the justice system? The court is mindful of the fact that there is a great deal of public intrigue surrounding the unsealing of the documents at issue here, Presco wrote. With that in mind, this court emphasizes that this ruling is a narrow one. And that's definitely a good thing. That's an opening in the case for these documents to be released. And she had said that previously, right? That it's not ending the case. It's, you know, just, uh, it just um, emphasizes that the ruling is a narrow one. So it's up to interpretation and her mind can be changed is what that means. Much of the public's interest in Epstein's case stems from the investigative journalism of the Miami Herald and its reporter, Julie Brown, whose series Perversion of Justice spurred the resignation of Trump's former Secretary of Labor, Alexandra Acosta. Uh, let's not get carried away, okay? I think Julie, Julie Brown's work was what initiated the whole reinvestigation, but I think that There was people that were very interested in this case even before that. Now, they might not have had the resources of Julie Brown, and Julie Brown was the one who certainly kicked in the door. There were a bunch of people who were still covering this case, I mean, from the beginning. There are people that have been covering this case since, you know, 2007. So, I think that, uh, I think that Julie Brown is certainly the one who got the door kicked in for this second time around. She deserves all the credit in the world. Her reporting was fantastic. The reporting of the Miami Herald was fantastic. And the way that she doggedly went after the case is just 
just awesome, and she deserves a lot of a lot of credit for that because without her hard work, you know, the second time around, there had been zero chance that this case would have been reopened. Zero chance. So it's it's nice to see that Julie K. Brown is uh, is char- charged so hard against this uh, against these people and took this case as seriously as she did and saw it through to an outcome such as Jeffrey Epstein getting arrested. It's pretty awesome work, and she, she should be commended for it. But there are other people who have been researching this case for a very long time as well. They just don't have the stature of Julie K. Brown. The paper's reporting also reanimated civil litigation from the convicted pedophiles' survivors and has been credited for Epstein's federal sex trafficking indictment, whose investigation has outlived its key defendant. Yeah, hey, look, like I just said, she definitely deserves all the credit in the world for that. Julie K. Brown's a hero in this story, and her her investigation into this case is should win awards because she really did the job of, of, of 15 investigative journalists, and, and she was dealing with some very dangerous people, and she was never deterred. She just kept going and kept pounding and kept grinding, and that's exactly the sort of thing you need to do if you're going to chase down people like Jeffrey Epstein. A little more than an hour before today's telephone conference, the Herald signaled it would remain a thorn in the side of Epstein's associates in a memo giving Maxwell's legal team a lesson in press freedom. Ms. Maxwell's attack on the Herald and Brown's reporting on this case of significant public interest is wholly unwarranted and her positions demonstra- demonstrate her interest in, in, in continues to hide from public scrutiny that which has already been sealed for far too long, the paper's attorney Christine Walls wrote. She further fundamentally mischaracterized the role of the media in seeking access to court records. The media are not distinguishable from the public. They are the surrogates for the public. And that's for sure. The media, the fourth estate's real job is to expose stuff like this. The the media's real job is to let the public know that there's corruption going on. The media's job isn't to play sides. The media's job isn't to have a political bent. The media's job isn't to tell you what to think. The media's job is to report the facts, and then you are to form your own opinions. And especially the media's job, or a content creator's job, or a reporter's job, is the most important thing is that you don't become the story. And there seems to be a lot of people who want to be the story in this case. And thankfully, Julie Brown and some of these other reporters that have been working doggedly for the Miami Herald have not done that. It's always been about the survivors and justice for the survivors. And that's definitely respectable, in my opinion. I think Julie K. Brown deserves a lot of credit for the way she went about this. Highlighting the potential for further press scrutiny, Walls took umbrage during today's phone conference with Maxwell's bid to have the language of the notifications emphasize the consequence of the information becoming public. Yeah, look, Maxwell doesn't want this stuff out there, doesn't want it to become public because that's one less bullet in her chamber. If this stuff is public and these guys are outed, what does she have holding over their heads? How can she blackmail them? How can she, you know, force them into doing what she wants them to do? If this all becomes public, she loses all the ammunition from her her gun. And then what? What is she left with? Nothing. She is left with nothing, and she knows the only thing that's keeping her out of prison at this point are the dark secrets that she knows and the powerful people that she can um, she can uh, unmask inside of this entire this whole entire criminal enterprise, and that's what they're scared of. And if they take that away from her, if they take that away from her, she will have nothing left, and the self-preservation that we see her involved in for so long will soon be gone, and she will have no choice but to be um, questioned by the FBI at that point. Judge Preska agreed the semantic change Maxwell proposed does sound terribly scary and was not needed as the notifications already state that the files would become publicly available. Accordingly, the proposed language is denied, Preska said. Well, that's good. A denial to, uh, to Ghislaine Maxwell's team, a denial to Ghislaine Maxwell um, and uh, her, her attempts to keep things quiet and to keep these names sealed. It's, it's always nice when you see her and her team get a slap in the face. When the Second Circuit unsealed the initial tranche of files in August, Their release turned up public scrutiny on model scout Jean-Luc Brunel, New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson, 
financier, pedophile, Glenn Dubin, and former Senator George Mitchell, to name a few. Another of these individuals, Britain's Prince Andrew, has been dogged by controversy ever since. Oh, as he well should. As he well should. This man is an absolute black eye for the English people, an embarrassment to the royals, and that's saying a lot considering all the embarrassments that they've had in their family. And for this guy to still run around and act like he hasn't done anything and to thumb his, his nose at the rest of us by hiring this legal team and hiding behind them after saying he was going to talk to the authorities, it just goes to show you the kind of person that Andrew is. Andrew, who is Queen Elizabeth's second son, is still reeling from a public relations disaster that transpired with a BBC interview in November. Federal prosecutors in New York disclosed earlier this month that the prince completely shut the door on voluntary cooperation, forming the US, uh, forcing the U.S. Attorney's Office to weigh other options. Former prosecutors for the district say those measures could include everything from a, a request under the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty or MLAT to an arrest warrant. Well, that's a, that's pretty hard, uh, strong a pretty strong statement, huh? An arrest warrant for Prince Andrew? That would be nice. I'd love to see that. I don't know if we'll we'll get to that point anytime soon, but I'd love to see it. In my opinion, the only way we can get there is if we do the do it correctly and go after the lieutenants first, round them all up, have them all start ratting on each other, build the case against Prince Andrew that's so ironclad that they can't deny the request, and then present the evidence to the English authorities and have them get on board. That's pretty much the only way we're ever going to get Andrew uh, wrapped up in this, especially if there's an arrest warrant. It's going to have to be an ironclad case. But the other ones, the, the core four, look, they're right here in America. They're right here for Berman to go after, and they're not going to be protected by that immunity deal, according to the SDNY. So what are you guys waiting for? Go get the core four, start the interrogations, have them all start singing like little songbirds, and then mass arrests. I am talking mass arrests. Everybody that was involved, all the employees who covered for them, the, the, the pilots who covered for them, everybody who does not cooperate gets arrested. Everybody gets hit with RICO charges. Everybody is have getting re in in fear of having all of their finances seized by the federal government that should be what's going on right now now prince andrew is certainly uh uh that you're going big game hunting when you're going after prince andrew and there's no doubt you want to put that feather in your cap and you want to bring him to justice but i think the proper course is to go after the core four in Ghislaine first get them caught up get them wrapped up get them singing get them ratting and then build that ironclad case that nobody can pick apart and then slam it right down on the prince of punk asses aka the prince of lies prince andrew hopefully we get some more movement in this case soon hopefully Preska does the right thing and releases the materials that should be released and hopefully the lawyers for virginia can continue to battle tooth and nail to get this stuff released for the for public consumption it's it's a tragedy that this has not been released already this is something that concerns the whole entire nation and it is still being kept under wraps we we deserve to know who was involved with jeffrey epstein and the survivors deserve to be vindicated by those people being put on blast as well all right, folks, if you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. Also, if you haven't checked out my newest podcast, COVID-19, The Pandemic That Changed Everything, you'll be able to find the link for that inside of the description box. Uh, so far, there's one episode. Episode two will be released on Friday. All right, everybody, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and I'll be back later on tonight with the Daily Drop.